Breaking news this morning. Two men are hurt after a shooting in Northeast Raleigh. Officers just cleared that scene after they were there for almost six hours. And it's going to be a nice warm afternoon with temperatures climbing into the 80s. I'll show you when the 90s return and when the humidity starts to climb coming up. Durham police were on the scene of an early morning shooting on Fayetteville Street. It happened just blocks away from where a three year old was shot in a drive by only hours earlier. We're inching closer and closer to the start of the U.S. Open, and it's going to be another busy day here at Pinehurst Number 2. Just ahead, I'll have a look at some of the practice rounds that are getting underway and what fans can expect today. And those golfers will have ideal weather for those practice rounds as we see a beautiful sunrise happening right now at 6 o'clock. We thank you for joining us. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Thanks for making us part of your Tuesday here. Yeah, and we get things going ideal. Great way to put it. It just feels so good outside. Beautiful sunrise on the way. Amy Wilmoth with the numbers to back it up here with that dew point, huh? It's real nice when you step outside this morning. 66, the temperature, the dew point 56, so some nice dry air in place. It's a lovely start to the day, and really the entire day is going to be pretty nice with temperatures near normal and low humidity, which is always a treat during the month of June. 55 is the cool spot in Roxborough, 64 in Southern Pines and Fayetteville. It's 59 right now in Goldsboro. We have mostly sunny skies out there, but we have seen some clouds on some of our cameras. We'll have a few clouds around throughout the day today, but it should stay dry for most of you today. Maybe a stray chance for a shower in eastern counties, and I'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. But overall, mostly sunny this morning and very nice. We'll jump into the low 80s by lunchtime. Our high temperature in the mid 80s. I'll talk about the Summer heat that's headed our way. Coming up, Ken. At 6.01, Amy, right now we're having a quiet start to the morning commute, which is what you want to hear this time of the morning. We are seeing some brake tapping going on on the north side of the belt line around the Wade Avenue split. We're working to find out exactly what's causing that. We'll let you know in about 10 minutes. Uh, elsewhere around the triangle, we're looking at taking a closer look at Durham, Chapel Hill, uh, Hillsborough area. Uh, right there, in the Durham freeway, we're seeing some uh, bumper to bumper traffic going on. We're also working to find out exactly what's What's happening there? We'll let you know in about 10 minutes. We're following that breaking news this morning out of Raleigh. Two men are in the hospital after a shooting on Charleston Park Drive. You see it here on this map. It's right near Buffalo Road and Southall Road. WRS Kelsey Coffee is live at the scene this morning where officers were investigating Kelsey for nearly six hours there. Jeff, they were in that scene cleared uh, within the past 15 minutes. But when officers were here in the neighborhood, it seems like they were focusing their investigation on this house here behind me. But let's take you to video now from the WREL breaking news tracker so you can see officers there investigating outside of that home. The shooting happened on Charleston Park Drive around midnight. The two men who were shot were taken to the hospital. We're working to get an update on their condition and police are still searching for the shooter. So we'll be sure to stay on top of this and keep you updated. Kelsey Coffee. WREL News, live in Raleigh. Gates just opened at Pinehurst a couple of minutes ago for day two of practices ahead of the U.S. Open. WRL's Laura Levine is live at the course this morning. Laura, good morning to you. Excitement is growing as the first round gets closer. And you know what, Renee, that excitement is so contagious when you're out here talking to a lot of the fans, but fans can expect to see another round of the practices here. Uh, throughout the morning behind me, you can see the greens are clear. We've seen a lot of the staff preparing the greens because, of course, another big day uh, just ahead here. Uh, yesterday, fans came from all over to see Tiger Woods practice. The 15-time major champion hasn't won a major event since his triumph at the 2019 Masters. He's played a more limited schedule and suffering a career-threatening leg injury in a car crash in 2021. We also saw Raleigh native Webb Simpson get some practice rounds in. Simpson, who is ranked 220th in the world, has had a difficult path to reach the Open. He had to qualify just last week at Duke University Golf Club to get here. Long day, especially for someone who understands how sweet it is to be in a major, especially U.S. Open here at Pinehurst. It was like... There was that pressure on me, but I think it was good and bad. It, it allowed me to really take the qualifier serious, do my prep work beforehand, and don't take it for granted. 
Yes, you can tell he is savoring every moment here. And we know that later this morning, we are expecting to hear from Tiger Woods in a press conference that begins at 10 a.m. But we're also expecting to see and hear from other big names today, such as Scotty Scheffler, as well as Xander Shuffley and Rory McIlroy. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Pinehurst. WRL is your home for the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. Our team will have complete coverage leading up to the ring after the tournament on your phone, tablet, and TV. First round tees off Thursday morning. Breaking news in Durham. A woman was shot around 1.30 this morning. It happened on Fayetteville Street near East Umstead Street. Officers found a woman who had been shot in an empty lot. Police say her injuries are not life-threatening. We're working to find out if they've made any arrests. That shooting, Renee, happened just blocks from where a three-year-old was seriously hurt in a drive-by shooting hours earlier outside of Walgreens. Police say someone drove through the parking lot there just before five and shot into a car where a man was sitting along with a three-year-old boy. Both of them were hit. The man is expected to be okay. The boy was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. People we spoke with say the regularity of shootings like this has them living in fear. City is in dying need. I left Philadelphia for this. And I, I, I come to a state where it's the same thing. So, I mean, it's with, it, with, I can't keep jumping states. And police have not yet made an arrest in this case. In a statement, Mayor Leonardo Williams said, as mayor of one of the coolest cities in America, best places to live, best business establishments, etc., none of that matters until we make the safety of our communities, especially our children, the number one priority in this city. <laughs> Good morning. I am Chris Lovingood in the WRL Live Center with a breaking news update from the Associated Press. Within the past 25 minutes, the UN is saying that Israeli forces and Palestinian armed groups may have committed war crimes in that deadly raid in which four hostages were rescued. Let me show you the video just in case you may not have seen it there. Essentially, for the Israeli military, the UN is saying that the Human Rights Office says that there is the possibility of excessive violence and failure to take precaution to minimize civilian harm in a place where it is complicated to distinguish between civilians and military targets. Now, for the Palestinian armed group, the UN says, that group is holding hostages in densely populated areas and putting the lives of nearby civilians at risk. All of this is coming out just now as right now, dignitaries from across the world, including U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, are in the Middle East trying to push for a ceasefire. Chris, thanks. Teachers and staff members at Durham Public Schools are feeling better about their future. Their confidence is up after county commissioners approved a $966 million budget. It includes a $27 million increase in school funding. The budget passes four to one. And you can hear the dozens of school employees applauding there after learning about the county's decision. Durham Public Schools plans to use the increased funding to raise pay for teachers and staff. This comes after months of walkouts and protests. Teachers we spoke with say they are happy with the outcome. It means that I won't have to go get a second job. <laughs> That's something that was coming. This budget hopefully will get me paid for my master's degree that I'm not getting paid for and hopefully help bring us up to a living wage. Brenda Howerton was the only commissioner who voted against the budget. She cited concerns about increases to taxes. You can go to WRL.com for a full breakdown of what it means for your tax bill. Six days of excitement at Wake Med Soccer Park is over now. The North Carolina Courage fell just short in the finals of the women's the soccer tournament, TST, last night. Despite that, the team's fans are buzzing about the memorable tournament and the historic final. The U.S. national women's team won the million-dollar grand prize with a 6-3 to three win over the Courage last night. It was the first women's TST running alongside the men's tournament. Fans say even though the Courage came up just short, the tournament is a big win for women's sports in general. That women's soccer is elite and amazing, and people want to come watch it. So come out and support the Courage, you know, here every week. And a team from Delaware won the men's tournament and its million-dollar prize. Taxes will be going up for many Raleigh homeowners after city leaders approved a new $1.4 billion budget. The budget passed at a work session yesterday by a 5-2 to two vote. It includes a property tax increase to pay for different services in the city, including raises for city workers. The budget will also bring back fares for Go Raleigh buses, which have been free since the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Today, construction begins on a new affordable housing community in Raleigh. A groundbreaking ceremony will take place at 10 this morning for the new community on New Bern Avenue. It is just off the 440 Beltline. It will have 192 housing units. It will also have 40 project-based rental assistance units for people at risk of homelessness. <laughs> For the first time, Celine Dion is opening up about her diagnosis with stiff person syndrome. It's like somebody's strangling you. It's like somebody's pushing your larynx pharynx this way. More of what she's going through in an exclusive interview with NBC ahead of tonight's hour long primetime special. And a police chief in Franklin County is ousted from his job. Why local leaders say they chose to remove him from office and what it means for the future of the department. And today is still going to be a comfortable day, but we have some pretty big summer heat that's going to be building in by the end of the week. I'll show you when we could have our hottest temperatures so far this year coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Amy Wilmoth and for Elizabeth this morning we have mostly sunny skies here in Durham. A little bit of cloud cover 66. A lot of sunshine in Fayetteville 64. A beautiful sunrise over Dix Park right now. A temperature of 66 and the dew point is still low in the mid 50s. So we're in the comfy category. It's going to be very nice outside today. The next three hours for your morning commute. The weather looks good. Mostly sunny skies. You'll want the sunglasses probably. We'll be in the low to mid 60s through 8 a.m. and then we're at 70 degrees by by 9 a.m. It will be warm this afternoon, but these numbers are pretty close to normal for this time of year. 83 for the high in Durham, 85, 85 in Raleigh, and 87 for the high temperature in Fayetteville this afternoon. And maybe happening now in the WL Traffic Center. We're seeing some uh, bumper to bumper traffic building on the north side of the Beltline this morning, which is typical this time of the morning. But the rest of the Beltline, all the major thoroughfares in Raleigh are free and clear this morning. We are seeing some uh, congestion building as well on 885 in those northbound lanes. So keep that in mind if you're getting ready to head out. Authorities in Arizona have released Rudy Giuliani's mugshot. Giuliani posted a $10,000 bond after being booked yesterday in Phoenix. He was indicted there in connection with Arizona's fake electors case. Giuliani pleaded not guilty to nine felony charges related to the 2020 election interference case. 17 other people are also facing charges. The Franklin County community of Lake Royale is in need of a new police chief. The local board of directors fired interim chief Gabe Fanera yesterday. In a Facebook post, the police department says the board accused him of insubordination. It also says the board is talking about dismantling the department. The police department says Fanera was fired at the start of the annual junior police camp yesterday. Pro-Palestinian protesters were asked to disperse after UCLA police announced an unlawful assembly last night. Protesters formed a roving pro-Palestinian camp on the school's campus Monday afternoon. That demonstration remained mostly peaceful, but the situation eventually turned chaotic. Los Angeles police and private security guards confronted protesters who stood behind barricades. At least two dozen protesters were arrested. So far, no injuries have been reported. Today, a federal appeals court will hear arguments over the conviction of disgraced entrepreneur Elizabeth Holmes. Holmes is the founder of the failed blood testing company Theranos. She was sentenced to more than 11 years in prison for defrauding investors out of hundreds of millions of dollars. She's already had more than two years reduced from that sentence. Celine Dion is giving some first insight, first time since she's been diagnosed with the rare neurological disorder stiff person syndrome. Now, WRL's Michelle McConaughey is here now with more on how Dion is coping with that illness and if a return to the stage could be in her future. Yeah, a lot of questions, Jeff, but Celine Dion is ready to tell her story. She says not telling the truth was too much to carry. Dion first shared her diagnosis in an Instagram video in December of 2022 when she announced that she was postponing a number of tour dates. She says that she first noticed early signs and symptoms in 2008 during her world tour. She was having difficulty controlling her voice and noticed her muscles stiffening. Dion said she felt like she was lying to the people who got me where I am today. I could not do this anymore. What do you want me to say? I have a uh, what? We did not know what was going on. 
I did not take the time. I should have stopped. Yeah, she says there was a lot going on in her life and she felt she had to hide and try to be a hero. When asked if a return to the stage was in her future, she says right now she's not sure. Her body will tell her if and when she's ready. Ahead of the one-hour primetime special airing tonight at 10 p.m., this morning, today, has a special preview. Michelle, thanks. Plans to build a state-of-the-art facility for a new pharmaceutical plant in Lee County has been approved. These are new renderings of the site, which will be in Sanford. This will be a Japanese company, Kiowa Kirin's first North American plant. The move will create 100 jobs. Governor Cooper said this deal was one that he was able to close during a trip to Tokyo last year. Wake Tech is holding a job fair today. They're in need of faculty and staff members for a variety of academic programs and departments. If you're interested, you can head to the conference center. That's the Building L on Southern Wake campus. It's happening from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. tonight. It is 617 and beautiful sunrises are the theme all across the triangle and beyond. Meteorologist Amy Wilmoth has a view from Southern Pines. Isn't it pretty here in Moore County? Gorgeous. Uh, this morning stepping outside, it looks beautiful and it feels nice as well. Temperatures are comfortable. The humidity is low. It's 60 in South Hill, Virginia, 64 in Southern Pines, 61 in Clinton with some sunshine, 59 right now in Smithfield. So it feels really good outside. If you want to get some steps in this morning, before work. Very comfortable with temperatures in the 60s through about 8 a.m. or so, and then we're in the low 70s by 9 a.m. At lunchtime, if you want to get outside, 81 degrees at that point, and then 85 for the afternoon high. So pretty similar to yesterday. We have this dry air mass in place, so it's still this dry flow that we have for today. Tomorrow, it's not bad, but the humidity starts to creep up just a little bit tomorrow, but it's not that bad. The dew point will be around 60, so it's going to be humid, but it'll feel a little bit more uncomfortable as we get into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with dew points in the mid to upper 60s. It'll definitely start to feel more like summertime. And high temperatures are going to be warming up as well. We're in the mid 80s today, and then we're in the upper 80s Wednesday. Thursday, 92 for the high, the heat index 93. It looks like Friday could be the hottest day so far this year with a high of 94. So far, we've made it to 93 at RDU. The heat index around 96 and then 93 Saturday heat index at 97 and we're still in the low 90s on Sunday. This is a pretty weather watcher picture sent in from Anne at Atlantic Beach enjoying the beach. A beautiful picture there. If you want to send us a photo, go to WRL.com, search weather watchers and you can submit it that way and we'll show some on TV. We are keeping an eye on the tropics right now. We have a frontal boundary that's likely going to stall and a low pressure system could develop as we head into the weekend and perhaps it could become a tropical depression. Right now it has about a 30% chance that that could happen. Yesterday models were showing about a 50% chance, so the chance has dropped with the overnight model runs. There's actually a higher chance that a depression could develop over the southern Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche area, or maybe even the Pacific. So stuff's starting to happen in the tropics. We'll let you know if anything develops or if there's anything that we're watching in the months ahead. 85 today, beautiful weather, low humidity, 87 Wednesday, and then the summer heat is back by Thursday, just in time for the U.S. Open. And it is going to stay hot through the tournament. It's going to be hot for Father's Day, low 90s, and even Monday, Ken, it's still going to be hot. So enjoying the nice 80s that we'll get today Ooh, and tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, the heat is on for sure. Uh, things are definitely heating up uh, in commute-wise. Uh, this morning we're seeing uh, some traffic building right there on the northern side of the Beltline, mainly around the Wade Avenue split. So keep that in mind if you're about to head out. Uh, elsewhere in the Triangle, uh, in Durham, we're seeing a really some bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. And this is really part of the morning congestion that we see this morning on 885, those northbound lanes. Just uh, keep that in mind if you're heading out. We've also got you covered if you're heading to those practice rounds down in Moore County. Right now, the southbound lanes of US-1 delay-free. Thanks, Ken. Today we may get a verdict in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial. What to expect as the jury deliberates after hearing a week's worth of testimony. Nicole Kidman and Sandra Bullock may be reuniting on the big screen. The plans for a sequel nearly 30 years in the making. Coming up in What's Trending. And here are your winning NC Education lottery numbers. We're back in a moment. This What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug & Home.
After more than two years of waiting, a fan favorite show is coming back. Ken Smith here now with what's trending this morning, Ken. Oh, uh, yeah, fans can't wait to see this. Apple TV releasing a first look at the second season of Severance with a promotional photo on Instagram. It also shared just a few seconds of video from the show in a teaser trailer. The first season ended back in April 2022. No word yet on the release date for season two. So it's, you know, the trailer seems weird enough to fit with the <laughs> sci-fi thriller that it is right there, where they've agreed to, the people there agree to have their brains kind of severed and uh, have that chip implanted in them. Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a premise. It's out there. It's out there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, speaking of Hollywood, Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman may be getting back together on the big screen. Warner Brother says it plans to make a sequel to the 1998 movie Practical Magic. It starred Bullock and Kidman as sisters who come from a long line of witches. So the Owen sisters could be making a comeback. This big news coming after the original movie uh, is now streaming on Max. And so uh, after 25, 26 wow. years later, they're talking about a sequel, just like a lot of other movies in the 90s. We're seeing sequels now. I don't remember Practical Magic. I did not no. watch that movie. I, now that I look at it, you recognize the people. Right. Right. But not, exactly. the yeah. not the story. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. The Florida Panthers are two wins away from their first Stanley Cup. They beat the Edmonton Oilers last night in game two of their series 4-1. to one. The Panthers now have a two games to none lead in the Stanley Cup final. Game three will be Thursday night in Edmonton. There's a new leader at the Big Rock Fishing Tournament in Moorhead City. It's game time, which brought in a 516-pound blue marlin yesterday afternoon. If game time's marlin stays as the largest fish the group will get 1.8 million dollars in prize money look at that size we'll take another live look now at pinehurst number two where golf's greatest will be practicing today ahead of the u.s open the event's happening today and a look ahead at the tournament that gets started thursday and the weather looks great if you're headed there today or tomorrow. Temperatures are still pretty comfortable, but big heat arrives just in time for the tournament to begin on Thursday. I'll talk about when the humidity starts to climb coming up. Also, two men are hurt after a shooting overnight in Northeast Raleigh. What we know about this scene that had officers investigating for nearly six hours.